Hello, hello, hello. Friday afternoon once again. Did I say it was Karen Frankel here with you? The picture that we are going to be doing is, is, drum roll please, is that. Now, that is actually a photograph that I took many, many, many moons ago. Um, a couple of interesting things about it. Probably the most interesting thing about it is that the bowl, the top of the bowl, is at eye level. So you can see it is straight across. And one of my very earliest paintings was done based on this image. And it was uh, when I was working exclusively with paper. One of the things that I love about this photograph is the wonderful dark and light that there is, including not only the shadows on the individual items, but also the shadow that is being cast on the item. I am going to be working with willow charcoal and a paper stump, which I don't think I, I'm not sure that I've shown you before, and um, the kneadable eraser. I might include a few other things, but that is um, what I want to work with today. One of the lovely things about this is that it's got both a smoothness around that bowl and also it's got um, texture on those lemons. Now I'm going to drop down to that so you can see the colored picture at the bottom right there. As you can see on the desk, I have printed out a picture, um, the same picture, okay, so there it is, that's what I'll be working with, um, and I've printed it out in black and white, particularly when you're working with charcoal or graphite, and you're working in grey tones, it is quite useful to change your photographs to black and white, obviously we can't do that when we're working live and we're just looking forward at whatever the still life is um, but on your phones most people today on their phone it's got a an ability to filter the photograph and show what it looks like in black and white and it is extremely useful to sharpen up those tones although this photograph has got such clear tonal values so you can see the light so clearly there, dark, the light of the bowl against the dark there, the dark of the bowl, a light um, lemon there. These aren't limes, they're just unripe lemons. Um, but you can see all of these edges. So all the things that I constantly talk about, I'm going to use my um, a little paper stump as a pointer. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous edge there that negative shape so that light there is the negative shape of that and that dark green is the negative shape of, of that so if you just follow that line which is obviously of the of the yellow lemon in front you would get a fantastic edge as per usual when i'm starting out a sketch I will draw very loosely. So I'm going to take a thinnish piece of charcoal, not too thin because they break, and I'm going to just establish where I want to put things very, very loosely. Okay. One of the pleasures of charcoal is that it's quite malleable. Now, you can't erase it like you can erase a pencil with a white eraser but you can make it more manual and as I've told you many times drawing is about adjusting so I am not actually measuring I could but I'm choosing not to but you can see that the shape of my bowl is way too small for um, those three lemons to go in so I'm just going to adjust and make the bowl bigger. Okay, maybe I will measure. Yeah, it's about 
that depth there is about half of that so I haven't got a pencil with me because I'm working with charcoal if I just measure like that and that is close enough now just a little tip when you are drawing bowls um, with fruit in make sure that the items sit right inside the bowl and I don't know if anyone noticed when I drew that lemon first I drew it there now clearly there's something underneath that lemon in the bowl otherwise it couldn't sit that high but it definitely is sitting underneath the rim so lots of times we tend to, we tend to put a bowl like that and we make our items way too shallow they need to actually sit inside the bowl so that is a little tip for you while we are busy with this okay um, so that is the basic one now in the photograph the this lemon carries on going up that lemon so it actually meets just in the middle and I'm not happy with that as a composition so I'm going to just give myself a little bit of negative shape there which will be more attractive and this lemon is a lovely one can you see because it's in front of the bowl uh, it is much bigger in size than the fruit that's in the bowl not because it's necessarily a bigger lemon but it because it looks bigger because it's closer now it doesn't really matter whether it's a bigger lemon or whether it's closer you need to know um, just to draw the size that you can see in the two-dimensional plan and we've also got a lovely negative shape there so whenever I sketch I am using all the different techniques that I teach I am establishing the, the general shapes and I am checking to see whether negative shapes are correct so that is not um, really what is showing in the negative shape there um, so I'm going to draw that a little bit more carefully and clearly this lemon is much smaller than that one because it is further away I can see that there is a stalk going behind the bowl I'm not sure if I'm going to leave that in or not quite frankly I think it might not be good for the composition but I'm happy to leave it in there for now um, and this one has got a stalk up there which I do think is good have a look at how big that leaf is relative to the lemon we often when we draw leaves we draw them too small relative to the fruit or relative to the flower that sort of thing there are a couple of lines and things I don't know what was on the desk I think there was a, a piece of cardboard or something um, I can just choose and I will choose to put a pretend table edge in the background and I might put it up there so in the photograph it is down here um, which is not bad but then it sort of lines up just with that lemon and I think I prefer it up there so I am planning my sketch okay I'm now checking my negative shapes now it doesn't really matter if it's perfect or not or perfect in that um, it's a perfect copy of the photograph as long as it looks realistic because nobody's going to see the photograph so I was just looking at these negative shapes between the lemons however I actually really like the negative shape of a bigger lemon there so I really like the negative shape that's going in there so I've increased it closer to what it is in the photograph because I think that looks more attractive so it's about making this 
look attractive. So if there's something that I don't like that's unattractive in the photograph, so I'm using my eraser just to um, erase, obviously. I usually use this as a creative tool rather than an, as an erasure tool. Um, and you can see I haven't rubbed out any other lines. Um, so I've established my shapes that I want. The next thing I'm going to establish is the shapes of the dark. Now, I know, and this is one reason why we're going to use our paper stump today, that the dark is going gradually from the dark side over to the light side. And the same on these lemons. So we haven't got a hard box shape with hard edges, in which case the changes in tone would be quite sharp. So, I'm going to kind of generically put a line in for more or less where the change of dark to light is. I could graduate it, I could put two lines there, so that's tone five, and then there's another tone there if I wanted, um, which I've just done clearly. And on this side, there's going to be a dark that cuts across, which is the shadow of that lemon. And on the lemon itself, we've got that nice dark across there. And it's so the dark is on the side and the bottom. The light is coming from there. So that is quite obvious. Um, now, for these beautiful darks, so the dark is kind of there, showing against this. Can you see I haven't actually made that shape yet? Um, except I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at that distance, and I think this lemon can be a lot bigger. Don't think it's big enough, the middle one. And again, this lemon has cast a shadow on that lemon, and we've got our dark, so you can see the process and this lemon here is quite in the dark it's just got that little corner there that is a light so obviously there are changes to those lights and darks but the major tones are where i've put them we also have clearly shadows on the table that are being cast and they help with composition I'm not going to put this table edge in or whatever it is um, and I'm using my finger as opposed to a, an eraser to get rid of some areas and the whole bowl is creating a shadow right across there Now, am I going to put some of these leaves in? Yes or no? Uh, let's have a look. So, I think that these leaves belong to something that's in the background because they're faded, they're not in focus, and they are not coming out of that lemon. So, I think I might leave that. So, that is my, my plan. Okay, so now... We come in with the charcoal and you can get a thicker piece if you want because what I want to do is there's a giant, giant thick piece. Um, the reason I'm suggesting a thicker piece is because I want to hold my charcoal like that so that I can get that sort of, you know, put it flat like that. And with these tiny ones, it's really quite difficult when it's that thin, to grab the, um, the charcoal. I've got a slightly thicker piece of charcoal, and I'm actually going to start not worrying about the texture just yet. So I'm not mark making, and I'm not showing the lovely edges of the lemons. Not just yet. I am just plotting those darks. Now, Funnily enough, even though it's a dark green leaf, it is not necessarily darker than the lemon. 
there's actually a lot of light showing there um, so I need to look at what's going on with that leaf and see if those leaf shapes um, work or I might simplify that leaf because there's a bit of a shadow on the lemon there as well. So already you can see the lemons are starting to look three-dimensional. There is a subtle darkness on that lemon, but it's not as dark as on that lemon. So not only is that lemon a darker color, that dark green is um, darker in tone than the lemon yellow. Um, Haha, -ha, the lemon yellow. Um, but there is a shadow on there. And so I am conscious of, is it a five tone? Is it a four tone? Is it a three tone? Is it a one tone? So if these are new concepts to you, you will find them either in my book or in my YouTube videos. So go and have a look for simple um, a tonal variation. There'll be something like that in the title. Now I'm going to also put shadow on the bowl and you can see that the whole thing is already coming to life. Now a little bit by accident, I have to admit it wasn't planned. Have a look at what's happened. I've left by accident that white edge which is quite beautiful in the photograph. Okay. So I might actually just come in and simplify that. Although my head is telling me, or my artist head is telling me, don't do that yet, Karen. Yes, it's lucky that you've left it, but leave it alone, stop fiddling. So as soon as I went in to put those darks in, my head said, stop fiddling. So I'm gonna stop fiddling. And then here we have a shadow. Now, I did a, work, I did a tutorial couple of weeks ago about reflected light and you can see there is a tiny bit of reflected light on the edge of that lemon there and um, there's, a, there's a bit of reflected light on the edge of the bowl there's reflected light on a few of these um, things there was something one else elsewhere that I was going to point out ah and um, there on that edge you can see the white china bowl is reflected on um, the edge of that lemon even though this lemon is still darker can you see there's a smidge of reflected light so i often ignore it to be very honest with you um, but if you notice it try not to put it in with too much detail it is just a sense that is there now you'll also notice that here on the photograph tonally speaking this lemon is dark on the edge but the shadow the deep shadow of the bowl and the deep shadow that is behind they kind of match in tone so you need to make a decision are you going to in fact leave that tonal difference like you can see in the photograph or are you going to change it? So am I going to put dark tone in the background or not? And um, I don't think I'm actually going to make up my mind just yet because I do have a little bit of time. So not everything needs to be done straight away. However, I just improved the, the shape of that thing, the, the bottom of the bowl there so that I could put some tone there as well. So there's your basic shapes. Um, you can see even this lemon is slightly darker than the edge of the white bowl. And this lemon, so I'm looking at where the shapes of tone are changing. And I'm adding more gentle um, 
um, charcoal to it. Now keep looking at the screen because I can see what you can see and it's actually very advantageous to have a look at your photograph, your drawing, a bit further away. So when artists step back from their work or I pick up the work and I show it to my students, you get a very, very good sense when you step back from it and it's very advantageous for me to actually just look at how it looks on the tiny, tiny screen um, because I can see how it's working. Okay, now for a bit of messy. So I'm already a little bit messy, but I'm going to get more messy. Many people, myself included, smudge with their fingers. But um, your finger can only do so much. It gets very smudgy and you can do broad smudging like that, but you can't do precise smudging up to an edge. And that is where these things come along. Um, their, their actual name, if you, I think, is called a torchon, which is a, a French name, T-O-R-C-H-O-N. But for all intents and purposes, it is a paper stump. And I can actually see, you probably can't from this distance, um, I can actually see that the paper's been rolled and pulled. And um, we once tried to make these in class, not very successfully. I don't know if you can see it's all folded at the edge, so that's just the half. But um, this doesn't look like it's actually been a rolled paper stump. This looks like it's just been compressed. So you can get a number of different sizes. So I bought a very cheap packet. You really don't need to, they don't need to cost you a lot of money. You don't need to go to a special art shop. Um, lots of people ask me, how do you get your point back or how do you clean paper stumps? So I was using this paper stump. Um, if you're following me on Instagram, I've decided to do a 15 second sketch every single day that I'm posting to Reels on Instagram. And yesterday, I did a whole sketch with this paper stump. So can you see it's a bit dark there? And can you see that I can actually draw with this paper stump? Now, lots of people ask me, how do you clean them? One way is literally to have a piece of scrap paper and just rub off as much as you can. Now, there's not really any point to cleaning them unless you're using them, I guess, for colored work for pastels and smoothing your pastels and rubbing your pastels. Um, you can do that because most of the time you're just going back in with charcoal. Um, so that's the way I do it. You can also, if it's a compressed paper stump like this, um, use a very fine emery board um, or a very, very fine sandpaper and, you know, grind off the, the top edge. Don't wet it, whatever you do. You might even be able to rub some out. I don't know. Let's see. See, look how black that, that eraser is. That was in my charcoal box because sometimes I use a white eraser. So I don't, I'm just doing this on the fly. Yeah, that's, that's kind of working. Yeah, so there you go. You can rub it out if you need to. Um, so that's a paper stump. And my when you use a paper stump, you need to use it with intention. What do I mean by that? Don't just rub everything. You can use these paper stumps with pencils as well. Don't, as a matter of habit, just smooth out everything. That is not... Um, the intention of these things. Use them to, in the same way as we mark make to show character, use these to show character. So I'm using this one to show that the character of this bowl, this thing that I'm smoothing here, is actually made of ceramic and it has got a very, very smooth surface so even pushing it where the white is is showing quite a lovely um texture there 
Can you see how I'm spreading it out there? So be careful when you do that, that you're not spreading it further than you want it. But you can see that this is quite lovely for showing those different shadows here. So there's a strong shadow line going down. I don't usually play around with all these different shadows. But that's working quite nicely and I'm trying to just retain that edge. Now, I often tell my students, I, I yell at them, that don't leave a white edge between the shadow and the object. And looking at the piece there, it actually doesn't look quite right. So this light is not reading as light on the, on the, on the lemon, it's reading as light on that bowl. And if this lemon is casting a shadow there, we will not have that white edge. So I'm actually going to fill that in as well. Can you see how much better that looks? So it's still a little bit light. And I'll show you, I will bring back the light on that lemon, but that shadow looks so much better. And I know that we've got different um, degrees of shadow here as well. We'll be using the kneadable eraser to adjust that. Okay, now, do I want to use a paper stump for the lemons? And the answer is I'm not sure. If I was doing a shiny apple, then I might. But these lemons have got a really gorgeous texture. However, it is possible to have a shiny skin, which they do, and texture. I'm quite liking how this paper stump is working. And I have to, to thank you that when I do these demonstrations, I actually sometimes need to go out of my comfort zone. I don't usually work with a, with a paper stump in this fashion. Um, and so I'm really rather enjoying doing that. Okay, I'm going to rub that as well. Because this is further back, when things are in the distance, you cannot see the tone. So, so, no, sorry, you can see the tone. You can't see the texture. So, this lemon at the back looks much more smudged. And in fact, um, it's looking quite hot. I know you can't see that lemon quite as well. Um, this dark is not gradual going quite as gradually as I thought you can see I've I've simplified just the top there I didn't want to bother with um, whatever was on there because I'm not really worried about that lemon uh, being well defined um, and I think that I'm going to in the dark here I'm going to smooth that tone as well Everyone is so quiet, you're hanging on my every word, unless I can't see your comments. And you can see that the dark actually goes much further. So spreading this is really quite nice. Now I must admit that using the paper tone, the, the paper stump, when you push the charcoal around on the paper, what you're actually doing is you're pushing it into the tooth of the paper. And so it will become more difficult to erase or to lift out. So bear that in mind. I should have borne born that in mind as well. Okay, so it does look like, at the moment, that I'm putting this paper stump everywhere. But I am not doing it out of habit. So, whenever you're drawing, if you choose, whatever it is that you're choosing to do, whether you're choosing to draw with line, even though I say line doesn't look good 
on three-dimensional objects, etc., etc. As long as you do it with intention, so it is actually your intention to do it, so you, endure, you do it by choice, you do it with the knowledge of how it's going to look. If you do it by habit, then you're not actually learning from it. So um, know what you're doing. Okay, I'm getting uh, um, a bit worried about how much I'm toning in. I'm quite liking what that whole thing is looking like. I'm also quite liking the coarseness of this character of the charcoal up against the smoothness there, especially with it um, coming forward. So the closer things are to you, the more detail you can see. So I am going to come back in and I'm going to put some character marks in. And I'm also going to come back in with my kneadable eraser and um, take some things out. So remember I changed the shape of this lemon. So I'm actually going to come in and clean up that edge. Now it is the nature of charcoal that you often get these strong lines on it. So at the moment, I'm actually trying to get rid of those lines and only have those lines present as a change of tone. However, if you actually look at the change of tone between this lemon and the wall, it is so marginal. If you half close your eyes, look through your eyelashes, you, you, they blend into each other. So I am allowing the luxury of leaving that line there a little bit. Now, the, t the shadow that is happening between these two, can you see I've lifted out a little bit, but it still looks like the shadow, um, the shadow of this is reflected back on that lemon. So shadows bounce around um, and reflect. Now, that little light that I left at the top, you can come back in and can you see what I've done with my um, eraser? Just as a matter of interest, I don't find doing that particularly useful. I like having the solid piece in my hand and then shaping it to a point. I don't know if you can see that ridge across there. Okay, so that I can touch the paper with that. and take it across right so you can see what I did there and you would find it very difficult and you'd smudge with your fingers if you had a tiny piece I like to say that charcoal makes artists out of all of us okay I'm going to clean up so I'm adjusting the tones here right so I'm going to adjust how how white the bowl is there. Can you see that it's not rubbing out like a, um, a white eraser does? Let's see if I can take out even more. Yeah, I don't like leaving those the, the eraser leftovers on the paper. But I did say that I was going to sh show the change in the shadows there a little bit. So it's really nice to just be able to drag this quite subtly. See how that's worked? And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a stronger line there. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. There seems to be a some sort of light reflecting there. You don't have to put in everything that you see, but my head is exactly the same as yours and it wants to. So remember to make artistic uh, decisions. Give yourself the benefit of allowing um, some artistic license. So um, I haven't done anything with that leaf. I am going to blend that leaf as well. I'm not liking it at all. And I must admit to being, to feeling a little bit rushed. It feels like I'm taking way too much time 
in the demonstration. I don't usually draw a whole sketch, as you know. But you are playing backwards and forwards with tonal variation. So I can see in the original picture that that side of the leaf is very foreshortened. And I'm going to go, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to make it look like the leaf is flat against the lemon. And in fact, I've done the opposite of what I wanted to do. So if I clean up the inside of the leaf and I show a shadow up against the leaf, hopefully that, yes, that looks much better. So that now looks like the leaf is lifted up off the lemon a little bit. Yep, I am pleased with how that looks. Okay, so we've kind of got mid-tones everywhere and light tones. Now I want to use my charcoal to give me the texture that I've been talking about. And just as a reminder, when you are putting texture marks down, uh, watch the mark making video to clarify this. When you are putting texture marks down, if you put lots of texture marks where you want the light to be, then that will no longer be light. So please um, exaggerate how much light there is and put your texture marks in the dark. Right? And maybe a couple of bits in the light to suggest that it's still the same item. Now these lines here were from when I was setting up um, the edge of that lemon. So I might actually use my eraser and I'd like that whole edge not to be so thick. I'd also like it to come round a bit so now I'm adjusting these shapes a little bit more. And I don't mind that I've got that little shadow um, left over there. So you can see that strong line, but I'm, I'm going to blend that line in. Because I want a dark edge, but I don't want it to read like um, a line. And I'm using my charcoal with texture. So I'm making little marks there. I d I'm not mad about those dots, even though it does look a bit dotty. So I'm lightening my grip on the charcoal. And I think I'm going to be adjusting with my with my needable. And in this instance, I'm actually going to push and lift rather than stroke. So putting that white back was a was a stroke like that. Cleaning up this was pulling the um, the needable eraser. But here to lighten it, I'm just pushing. How's that looking? Okay. And this, you can actually use that sort of as a print almost. Um, where is my paper stump? Now, one of the things I did in my little um, two minute, no, 15 second um, YouTube Instagram, I don't know what I'm talking about, um, I will show you now, is if you have a spare piece of paper and you put down a whole lot of charcoal and you've got a whole lot of charcoal dust you can actually grab some on your uh, paper stump and use it to draw with so i've picked that up let's see if it's going to give me a much softer mark I think I might be getting a little bit too fussy there. I'm getting a little bit too detailed, but I'm quite enjoying the mark that it's making. And in fact, I'm going to come over here 
and say, hey, this fruit over here is the same as that fruit, is the same as that fruit, and is the same as this fruit. So they should all have similar marks. So you don't put different marks on different on, on the same fruit, on the same object. I'm smoothing it clearly. I'm leaving some of the roughness there because I quite like that. Now I've put way too much dark across there. So it is a process of adjusting and adjusting and adjusting. So I'm bringing back some of the light and you can see when I take that out, it is still leaving that ghosty feeling, which is fine. It's one of the, the, na the nature of charcoal, which I actually quite like. So I'm just trying to soften these edges. Um, I'm just wondering if I've actually done enough. And I'm going to put a little bit of, of those similar marks as I did there because I want to show that it is also a lemon. Now clearly the leaf won't have the same texture as the lemon. And I'm going to lighten it a little bit here more so that it still looks like that shadow. How's it looking? Actually, the shadow goes right the way up and this light goes right the way up. So... I'm going to try my white eraser because I've not, I've not viewed that lemon particularly well. But there is my preciousness coming in and my need to get it right, which I keep telling you I've got the same needs as you. And it actually doesn't really matter, I don't think. So I'm smudging that a bit because I don't like I didn't like the fact that that red is a hard edge, but there is actually a lovely um, edge forming that negative shape there against the the lemon yellow the yellow lemon <laughs> is quite nice. And quite frankly, I'm really enjoying that untouched character of the charcoal um, on that lemon. Um, having said it's untouched, I'm going to use the tiny, tiny paper stump to make the lemon, as it goes into the bowl, I'd like the edge of the white, even though it's very similar in tone to that, i just like to give it a bit more information there. So I'm going to put that tiny pointed uh, thing in the charcoal and I'm going to see if I can put a very soft edge there so that it brings up the edge of that bowl, which it does. And I'm going to take the edge here and I'm going to make the, the white edge of the bowl a little bit narrower. So I'm using the much more precise paper stump to do that. Okay, so the only thing that I can see that's not working, I've just noticed the shape of the bowl there as against the shape of the bowl there. And so I'm actually going to correct that. There is a bit of reflected light there. So I don't mind that that tiny section is reading. And remember I said I was going to bring back some reflected light on this lemon here. 
So again, I'm just going to, there it is. That was quite easy. I'm just going to, I didn't push very hard. I'm just sort of printing with the eraser. And the edge has gone, so I'm bringing the edge back. But that absolutely does look like um, a bit of reflected light. Um, there was something I was going to do when I looked up. Okay, so when I looked up, I could see that looked like a thick line there. So I'm just going to strengthen the line, strengthen the tone, not the line. I'm going to make the tone the same. So don't be afraid of strengthening, even after you've smudged, strengthening some of the tones. So can you see the character of the charcoal is coming back a little bit now? So even on the smooth bowl, I like to see the character of the charcoal. Probably the only thing left to do really that is going to bring this together and help, it always helps to read things as three-dimensional, is um, the shadows that are cast. So you can see that the bowl is mixing with the shadow there. The shadow of this lemon is quite strong. And it blends in with the bottom of the lemon. And the light actually comes round the bend here. Can you see that? Now, I've probably taken out a bit too much light there. With the eraser see I'm using my thin little eraser again so here comes the paper stump to just smooth that off so the paper stump helps you to get these um, subtleties looks like I'm fiddling a bit now I am So I'm bouncing between the paper stump, between my little piece of willow charcoal and the eraser. And I think I'm going to leave it there. Having said that, I might just add a touch to this poor little lemon in the back. Give it um, a little bit more oomph. Okay, so now I am definitely fiddling. So I'm going to stop. And um, there is my finished picture. Thank you for your company. Get drawing, keep drawing. Karen Frankel signing out. Bye-bye.